Vision. On to our weekly national reminder. Well, it was meant to ensure every Kenyan living in any part of the country had access to quality, specialized health care services. This was the multi-billion shilling managed equipment services program that was launched in 2015. That's right. Now, seven years on, however, the initiative has been riddled with irregularities and the scheme has hardly made any difference to Kenya's health sector. Tonight on The National Reminder, our very own Victoria Rubodiri takes you through what was a well-intentioned but poorly executed plan. It was the first mega project by the Jubilee administration after assuming office in 2013. The Medical Equipment Leasing Project, or Managed Equipment Services Program, as it is officially known, entailed equipping health facilities with modern and specialized diagnostic equipment. An exhibition of the equipment at State House Nairobi in February 2015 was to mark the official handover of the equipment to all 47 counties in a 30 8 billion shilling deal. But some key stakeholders, namely governors, were conspicuously missing. Well, governors argued that the deal did not give value for taxpayers' money, nor were the counties prepared to receive the equipment due to lack of trained personnel and inadequate infrastructure. Health care is at different levels in our county. All counties are not at the same level. I've said even from uh, earlier that some counties even already have this, uh, this, this equipment. Some counties do have, others don't have. Others don't even have space, don't even have rooms where they put this uh, equipment. Some don't even have electricity in their hospital facilities, some of the counties. Uh, and this is a preparatory work we were saying was never undertaken before this scheme was negotiated. After a contentious face-off that lasted almost five months, the governors eventually signed the deal in June 2015. The scheme was supposed to run for seven years, starting June 2015. The national government contracted five firms to supply theater equipment, renal kits, ICU equipment and radiology equipment to 123 hospitals earmarked as beneficiaries of the project. This would come at a cost under the MOU signed between the county governments and the Ministry of Health. The devolved units each paid 95.7 million shillings for the kits in the financial years of 2015, 2016, 2016, 2017 and 2017-2018. Well, this increased to 200 million annually in the 2018-2019 period after the addition of 21 counties and three national hospitals under the project. There were questions as to why counties paid an equal amount for the equipment despite not getting an equal number of medical kits. By 2019, a good four years later, a report tabled by a Senate ad hoc committee looking into the MES project showed that digital x-ray machines, which were installed in 15 counties, lacked adequate electricity supply and, as a result, remained unused. In some instances, there were no specialists available to operate the equipment. Well, the Senate also reported that prices for some of the medical kits were inflated by as much as six times. For instance, taxpayers paid 23.5 million shillings for one ultrasound machine that at market rate should go for about 3.15 million shillings. In another case, a sonographic essential mammography primarily used to screen for breast cancer cost 62.98 million shillings. That's four times more than its market price of 15.67 million shillings. Now, the revelations would put the then Health Cabinet Secretary, Cicely Kariuki, on the receiving end of pointed questions from a Senate committee. Why would you supply an additional hospital in Masabit and build Narok equally for nothing supplied to Narok? Equipments were just dumped on them after signing an MOU. And what he shared with us as MOU is not a document that one can rely on. It was a meeting which is minuted and a community issue which happened before the MOU. I wanted to take the assumption that that was part of the acceptance as it were. Exactly a year after that encounter, senators rejected that very same report by the ad hoc committee during a debate in October 2020.
Senators said the ad hoc committee failed to offer solutions regarding the medical equipment leasing scandal and called for a further probe by either the Health Committee or a committee of the whole House. Well, that process is yet to be concluded. Meanwhile, just as the MES contract was ending in February this year, governors decided to renew the deal and extend it for another three years. The Council of Governors raised equity concerns in the contract as one of the conditions to be addressed by the Ministry of Health. For the last seven years, all counties have been paying 200 million shillings, regardless of which equipment they received and whether they were working or not. The situation has compelled the national and county governments to jointly agree on the negotiating team that will come up with the new terms of reference for the contract. The extension of the scheme will cost 100 million shillings per county per year, which translates to 14.1 billion shillings over the next three years. That's your national reminder of the week, lest you forget.